So when I first started to describe myself, I was a multimedia artist, not really understanding what that meant, just that I was, I, I am involved in so many things. And then I found out that's more about, you know, um, you know, production and, and video. And so I'm a multidisciplinary artist. But then I just heard something more recently, it's interdisciplinary. And so all of my, everything that I do is interconnected. And what I actually like to describe myself is I'm a Buffalo artist. So my mantra is Buffalo. I have a manifesto that I call, that's centered on Buffalo. And so everything I do is, is related to Buffalo. So I bead Buffalo, I paint Buffalo. I tell stories about Buffalo. I um, am learning some songs about Buffalo. I, I create um, opportunities for others as well as myself to learn Buffalo dance and movement. I, um, I sew star blankets and uh, I like to incorporate um, some Buffalo quilting into my star quilts when I have the time. Um, I, 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 everything that I do um, has some connection to Buffalo. So I kept doing, do Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo that I was like, you know, maybe I need to expand my horizons. And so um, there's a story that I heard uh, about baby Buffalo. <laughs> and when a baby Buffalo drops its belly button, where that belly button falls, a crocus sprouts up. And so I thought, oh my God, I could be crocuses. <laughs> but it's still connected to Buffalo. So uh, I'm a Buffalo artist and, um, and, and so anything that I do, even if it is in Buffalo, it's done with a thought of Buffalo in my mind. If I'm quilting, I will, um, my husband helps me in, in quilting. So he knows, he does his job. So he cuts, he irons, um, and he, and that, he loves that. I mean, well, I, <laughs> I think he loves it. <laughs> Um, you know, it comes from his background, right? So he used to always iron his shirts when he was um, working his nine to five job, right? So, cause he likes a crisp shirt. So I thought, well, let's incorporate that into our art practice. You do the ironing, cause I don't like ironing. And the cutting, I showed him how to cut, cause there's a specific way we need to cut the material with the grains and the bias. And, um, and I'm making sure that we're thrifty with the, with the fabric. So it has to, we have to save fabric, right? Cause it's expensive. So, so we'll co-create and I'll just give him the material. He'll cut it up and then, and then I'll start sewing. And so then as I sew, he'll take it and start ironing it. And so then we just kind of continue this process. One of my friends, and I, I, I don't think I discussed this in my intro, but one of my friends, described me as a transitional designer so that means that um, and I don't talk about this too often but it's you know I guess I need to share it so uh, I'll make star blankets for people who passed away because star blankets are are you know used um, in different um, celebrations including celebration of life and as well as for babies, graduation, you know, um, just wanting to give somebody that star blanket for, for just for their being. But when it comes to a celebration of life, I'll usually have to have it done within two days because um, it's that short time frame. And so when that happens, then it's, you know, we definitely need that more of that teamwork in, in getting the, the star blanket finished. So, you know, um, I recently acquired through the Sask Arts Board um, this quilting machine, and and that's helped. That's helped me s limit the amount of time that I sit in this chair because um, I find that. Um, so actually, um, I don't sit in nor in this in a wooden chair when I'm sewing. I sit in a like a soft chair, be and I I have to have back support for my chair because. In these rush projects, I'm sitting for um, you know up to 20 hours in two days, right? And so it's I need to get up and move my legs around, and I, I have a water bottle beside me because I need to stay hydrated, and because I'm doing a lot of this, 
some day in this motion just you know if you could do that for 20 hours <laughs> I have, a, I have a bag here that has my my gloves in it so I'll um, you know these are gardening gloves but they have this grip on here and so I'll put them on because they grip the fabric so I'm not I'm not worrying about the fabric slipping while I'm sewing because if it slips then um, you know it just makes it more it more difficult for me so I've adapted all these techniques to sew for long lengths of time and, and, and be able to do that project within a short period. So kind of know how long it takes to make a star blanket based on whether it's a baby, twin, queen, and um, shortcuts. <laughs> so that's, I guess, kind of the typical. Um, we have to clean the, we used to, we used to quilt the, the, the star blankets on this floor. And so we would, clear out the everything in the, our space here, put it all to the wall so that it could fit a queen size star blanket. And then we would lie on the floor and pin it because using, um, there's quilting pins you can use. And um, you know, so that took, uh, that takes about an hour to do. And uh, so I got, get our older son would come down. We're like, we need you. <laughs> um, and my husband and myself, we, th three of us, are know how to do that because you you have to know that technique as well to make sure that the quilt doesn't bunch up on the other side because you're you're um, pinning three layers so i'm self-taught but my my grandmother's quilted but i you know um i wasn't i was an admirer of their work but i wasn't taught by them so and, and part of it might have been because I didn't know how to approach them and part of it might have been because um, I was a teenager. <laughs> so I, I look back at, at when I was a teenager and I'm like, oh my God, I could have learned so much if I was more open to it. And so I, I missed out on that opportunity. So um, I started to make star blankets probably uh, about 25 years ago and I just made my own little diamond pattern got it wrong I got the angles wrong and instead of an eight point star I made a six point star but I was like okay well I'll learn the next time so I just been adapting and learning as through the years you know I've had like my my older sister taught me some techniques uh, the peyote stitch and um, you know so I've had other people in my family my uncles used to bead and um, you know so I've been influenced by by them and my grandmother used to bead um, the tops of moccasins my mom's mom she used to bead the tops of moccasins and then that's it and then she would give them to the handicraft and then they would create the moccasin so she would she would bead and it'd be like amazing beadwork um, and and so uh, you know, I, I guess just have these, these inspirational people that I've seen be, and, um, you know, part of it is, is I think really being stubborn and, um, um, you know, you just think that you could do it all yourself, right? And so I wish that I had reached out to teachers when I was younger. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have been as hard to learn. So a lot of the work that I do is self-taught. And, um, and now, of course, now that I'm, you know, <laughs> in my age, now I'm like, teach me, teach me. I want to learn so much more. And, um, and so now I'll use YouTube videos and um, I'll talk to other people as well and find out, you know, what works for them. And, um, and especially with sewing, I talk with other um, designers um, because I not only make star blankets, but I make fashion as well. So I'm always challenging myself and, and saying that I could do things and not knowing if I can or can't until I actually do them. And so that's been a lot of part of my practice is, is trial and error. So now I have a sketchbook and I have a few of them. I want to create this eight foot tall um, indigenous woman and she's like the base of this you know 20 foot tall tree and um, I don't know how to sculpt <laughs> I've so I've started to work in clay and um, so I started to think okay how do I how do I even work with clay what what kind of what is, is clay 
right? And I'm like, oh my God, I have to take some classes. And then COVID hit. But so I'm just formulating this idea in my head. How is she going to look? And so I have the idea. I drew it, drew down how she would look. And so I've been drawing her and she's changed, right? So now she's becoming this older woman. And in one image, she was this younger woman. So I'm just drawing out the image and started painting her in watercolor, taught myself watercolor during COVID, which I've always wanted to do. And, um, and then I used to get a little bit of clay and I thought, I don't even know this will work. So I started to, to work her in clay. So I have a little clay piece. It's just a little small one. I thought I shouldn't go so, I, you know, think of it as something that's unattainable. I should, I got to start small. So I'm just imagining her, you know, on the paper as a smaller, um, sculpture and then you know, eventually I want to take some classes, talk to other people. How can I make her as a miniature, um, what do you call it, maquette, mm -hmm. right? Make a maquette and, um, and then start imagining how she'll look as an eight foot tall um, woman. You know, for, for me, it, working in, in Buffalo, you know, it's about wanting to understand, you know, my ancestors in the past. And, and trying to recreate, you know, moments in time of maybe when they were working with, you know, like the buffalo hide and, and creating, you know, a buffalo hide teepee and trying to imagine how that would have been, how the process in creating a buffalo hide teepee. So that's one of the projects I'm working on is, is and it's a long-term project, is because you need at least 13 buffalo hides scraped and hair removed to make a buffalo hide teepee. And and so for for maybe for the community, you know, 500 years ago, it would have been like a week, you know, or two weeks. Well, I, don't even, I wouldn't even know, but for us, it's gonna be like two to five years. <laughs> and so, you know, it, for me, it's about how, who am I right here in the present? Who do I wanna be in the future? And, and recreating those moments from the past, just so that I can, you know, activate that that blood memory, that DNA within myself, you know, not only as a, an artist, but just as a person, you know, that, um, that were my ancestors' dreams. And so, and, and then for myself, thinking of a, the next thousand years, who, who am I going to influence? And um, everything that is, is contemporary today, um, like using paint scrapers, right, and using sewing machines and, and quilting machines, a thousand years from now, it might be considered a traditional tool. And, um, you know, and so I need to start preparing for thinking in that way. And it always blows my mind when I think, well, how do I imagine the next thousand years? That's, that's mind blowing. But there are people out there doing that. And so I'm, I'm building my art practice to, to build myself, to be able to have the space to create and think about that. So um, one of the, the art pieces I'm working on actually comes from May, 2018. And so I was inspired to create um, this, I call it Maka Unshi, or Mother Earth, you know, as a, as a Sundance tree. And so um, she's this, you know, huge woman, um, you know, eight foot tall. But actually, I don't know if you could see the, the pieces. And when I look back at this recently, I was like, what are those little tiny rabbits at the bottom and they're actually men so she's actually bigger than eight feet tall she's you know 20 feet tall or she's like this um um redwood tree and and she's the solidness that you know as a sundance tree the the men are connected to her and um and she's naked and she's got tiger stripes on her stomach from birthing so many um, beings and things and so from from her I, I drew her and and then I started to imagine how she would look as a sculpture and so then I created this clay piece and her hair 
you know it's just this wild not um, you know just like her hair would be like the leaves or the branches of the tree and um, and so I I um, created that piece to start to begin to imagine how she would look and initially you know I thought that she was going to be like this old cookum looking face and then when I um, started to teach myself watercolor and I, I drew her out and, and created this piece she looked very young and youthful and and her you know her arms were out like like she was um, free and her hair you know was is just blowing in the wind and and the, and the tree comes out of the top of her head so I really liked this piece and um, and then I kind of I'm shy too about drawing her naked or you know showing her as naked and and I was like well why am I so shy about that I but then part of me is like is this you know because I want is she's going to be a representation of me and my body and so that was that's some internal thinking that I need to do and and so right now this is one of the pieces I'm working on and and um, and so the men are connected to her through the strings and the rope connected to the top of the tree. But then I thought, well, the women need to be there. And so I started to draw the women and their supporters, you know, around the men who are, who are connected to that, that life giver. And, um, and so, yeah, so this is kind of, this, this would be more the, the vision of how I see the bigger art piece. Um, but how that would look, where it would be, whether it's shown for exhibit or whether it's just something I create for me, I don't know yet, but it's starting to come out and so I'm, I'm just creating these images as it comes out. Mm -hmm.